Hey everybody, how's it going? Um, I'm doing another video that I've seen a few people do, which is the 50 facts video. And I thought I would participate in this because it's something fun and why not? It's on my vlog channel. So these are some 50 facts about me. And once again, um, I'm going to say anybody who would like to do this, feel free to. I especially would love to see a response on this from Nitro Bex and Got That Funk. Um, because, you know, you guys, I, I, I'm a regular viewer of your videos. And actually, I got this one from Leah Mouse, who does fantastic videos. I recommend her channel. I recommend you going to her store. Um, I got this really awesome lip balm that kind of reminds me of an orange Tic Tac that's just absolutely fantastic. So please go there if you can as well and support her. All right. Um, here we go. Number one, I'm a knitter. I've knit for the, been the knitting for the last, uh, probably for the last few years now. Um, one of my specialties definitely is hats, but I also love to do accessories. Haven't tried the sweater yet, but I think that'll be my challenge for the new year, coming up in the new year next year. Number two, I'm a vapor. Here's a vaping device. I vape at zero nick. Um, I experimented and tried smoking, but I also do it to support the community, and I believe that we all have a right to make that choice. Plus, I have seen with my boyfriend how much it has helped him quit smoking because that's really what it's all about. Uh, number three, I'm an online podcaster. Uh, I started with Blog TV. Then after that shut down, I looked around for a place, found VapeNet. Then um, now it's Vape TV Live. Uh, number four, I'm an activist. Um, my Basically, my areas of focus for activism are rights. Equal rights, women's rights, pay equity rights, uh, vaping rights, you know, just the right to live your life and not, you know, irregardless of laws. You may have some regulations, but, you know, having the right to to live the way you want to and not have somebody dictate to you because they don't like they don't like their life. So they figure since they don't want to face it, they put it on you. Uh, number five, I have a boyfriend. Uh, of course, you've probably seen a few videos of him with me. Uh, we've been together for the last couple years now. Uh, people have asked, oh, are you going to get married at some point? Yeah, but we want, we're taking our time. We want to make sure things are financially viable. And plus, we're doing things in a non-traditional way, and that just seems to work with us. Uh, number six, I am currently an online English as a second language teacher. Um, I work through a company that's based in South Korea. I've done it for like a little over, get, coming close to two years now. Um, the hours are kind of weird because you have to conform to the system, the, 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 the time change in, in Korea. Otherwise, um, it, pays pretty, it pays pretty well. You start at a good rate. And then depending on what work you do and how well you do, you are, there are chances of getting a raise. And that's already, I'm happy to say that's happened at least twice this year. Hasn't been much, but hey, it's better. It's it's to me, it's a lot because it does help pay the bills, and that's really my day job and what I do at the moment. Number seven, um, as far as religious affiliations are concerned, I am Catholic. I'm a pretty, I'm not very conservative Catholic in religious in religious stuff. I'm conservative on other things, but when it comes to religion, I'm more liberal and progressive. And I'll leave it at that. You can ask me questions later. Number eight, K-pop. Um, yes, I I haven't listened to K-pop in a while. My boyfriend happens to love K-pop, which for some of you out there would be not only a surprise, but I think for my Korean friends and my students, they love it too. Uh, number nine, classical music. Yes, I, on occasion I do listen to classical music. Um, I think it's relaxing and soothing. Um, that's also good Like if I don't feel like watching YouTube videos or if I'm on break. From teaching or whatever um that is one of my things I like to listen to. I haven't listened to it in a while I probably want I do want to get back into it and my who knows I might have it for background music for a couple podcasts or something who knows number 10 website yes I've had a website now it's made it's gone through quite a few changes the first person to help me actually make my website was a by a, a youtuber by the name of Eden's Cancer. Some of you who have viewed my videos and have followed me for a while might know who he is, was. <laughs> oh, whew, excuse me. Haven't heard much about him these days, but he created my first one. It set the tone of the base. Originally, it was like an online resume. Now I've done more with it. Um, Derek Liamas's 
then boyfriend, now ex boyfriend. She he helped me get things set up, and I've had a few other people help me with some of the tech glitches and just get like my online store and things there. So if you want to go there, information's down below. Okay, no Windows 10, number 11. I'm holding off on Windows 10 as much as I can because I've heard so many people have had problems since they've uploaded to it. In addition, um, I'm afraid of breaking computers, even though they're compatible and Windows 10 friendly. I just to choose not to do it. It's my choice, and I'd rather hold off until they get all the kinks done. And besides, when you have first releases, it's you, you know it's a, that big new shiny thing, but it's better to wait. Even people who are techies even know this. Um, let's see here, number twelve. I what I don't know what I wrote here. Um. Ah, sweet tooth. That's what I wrote. I made a list, by the way. <laughs> Uh, sweet Tooth, yes. I do have an insatiable Sweet Tooth. Um, when it comes to candy, I go on these weird candy binges at times. I'm not sure why. Um, but I've had to quell that quite a bit because of these things. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, and so you want to know what my favorite candy is? Um, actually, um, I would have to say Licorice is one of them. Um, I also like um, those, those Necco wafers. Those are pretty awesome as well. Probably that would be the number one. Oh, and also gummy bears and those gummy Coke bottles. Okay, number 13. Well, I love Korean and Japanese food. And it's interesting how that's become a, like a popular combination these days. Um, there's some great restaurants in the area that I've, I go to once in a while for whether certain cravings or whatever. And I actually know how to make a few things, believe it or not. Um, I can make some like Korean spicy Korean stew. Um, I can I can prepare the uh, cold noodle the cold noodles both Korean and Japanese style. Um, stir fries are another one. Even though that's technically Chinese, you can apply them to the other ones as well. Fourteen Halloween. That's actually my favorite holiday ever. I love it simply because of the fact that um, it gives you a chance to pretend and dress up as someone for one day, and nobody cares. 15, poetry. That's how I actually got started into writing. Um, on my website, on the blog section there, I actually have been posting some poems from the past just to show people, hey, this is what I do, this is what I write. And I love it. I see it as an art form. I have tried publishing books through lulu.com. They never went anywhere. I think what I might do is just close that out, close the account out, take those books out, and maybe just buy the uh, PDFs and maybe republish them somewhere else. Who knows? Documentaries, number 16. Yes, I am a huge fan of documentaries. I think they're interesting. I think they're educational. You can learn a lot from them. Um, and the documentaries that apply to me, eh, that really depends. Ah, number 17. Uh, speaking of that, I'm going to talk about Anthony Bourdain. He is one of my favorite favorite people. I love watching when he had uh, no reservations. Um, then he had the layover. Now he has this um, oh, that's the one on CNN that he has now. Um, he's a badass. I've read his book Kinchy Confidential. I want I want to get more of his books because he definitely writes how he speaks. Um, in any event, I just think he's a badass, but he's kind of, sort of like the punk rocker of the travel and food culture world, and that's what I like. Okay, number 18, Vape News. I am the current contributing writer to Vape News. I have been blessed to have people respond and write to me to tell me what they feel and think about it, um, and I, I really do thank you for that. Um, I felt like getting involved with that was my way of actually becoming a part of the vaping community, and since writing is my passion, what a way to do it. And plus, it's also fulfilled my dream of actually writing and being an actual contributor, contributing writer for a magazine. And I have applied to, like, other places and things and given them my pitches, but nothing's really come of it. And so I'm glad I have that as a backdrop. Plus, it's the second thing I do to make money, by the way. All right, 19, vegetables. Yes, I actually eat more vegetables than I do fruit. That came because I actually spent a lot of time uh, living in Korea and eating all these really awesome vegetables. Favorites would include tomatoes, which some people say is a fruit, cucumbers, sweet peppers, uh, especially the red ones. 
Um, radishes, especially if they're pickled radishes. And I do eat kimchi, but I can't really have it in the house because it kind of stinks up the refrigerator and my dad doesn't like that smell. Okay, 20. I have this huge thing for Asian yogurt drinks. You know those drinks that come in a small dinky bottle that you see at the Asian markets? Every time I go, I get them. I drink one like almost every night until I run out and have to get more. They are sweet. They are good. They are comforting. And they actually, and actually drink having anything with yogurt, especially that, actually is good for digestion. There are, there's a slew of, if you go live in Japan or Korea or you go to those markets, there's a slew of them that you can buy. And I used to actually get those because they were just so damn good. Uh, 21, loves deep conversation. I just love conversation in general. That's one of the reasons why I got into the online podcasting thing. Um, it started out as just a something to be sociable. Now it's become a f way to express myself. Um, it's almost become in some ways a substitute to YouTube. But in other ways, it sometimes has become an addition to. And there are things that I like to talk about. As long as I got listeners and people who are willing to interact and hear what I have to say and have their opinions, hey, that's even better. Oh, 22, creative type. Yes, I am a creative type. Sometimes people don't know how to take me because I'm a creative type. I don't think in the orthodox way. I don't think in the traditional sense a lot of times. And once you figure out where I'm coming from on that creative angle, actually, you go realize, hey, wait a minute. That is a different way of looking at things. And that's how I am. Creative tips are like this. We... We, we kind of sometimes fly by the seat of our pants. We love the interaction when somebody is talking about their artistic endeavor, their writing endeavor, um, just even just sharing ideas. That, that That's like a turn on for me. All right, 23, like a coffee drinker. Now, I never thought I would be a coffee drinker. I've always been a tea drinker, but since I've worked, and actually this happened when I lived in Korea too, um, I would drink some coffee. I actually function better drinking coffee midday than I do in the morning. In the morning, it doesn't really do it. it my stomach just feels kind of nasty because of all the acid. For some reason, midday, it just works for me. That's how weird I am. All right, 24. Uh, hard work. I believe in the ethic of hard work. Nowadays, everybody believes that something has to be quote-unquote given to them. And for me, it's like, no, it doesn't have to, it's not given. You have to work your ass off for it. That's how people find jobs. That's how people become successful. But I think you also need to be around those people who value the hard work. So that way it can inspire you to do the same. Um, Let's see, 25, what did I write there? Ooh, I hate when I can't read my own writing. Ah, independent. Um, I Politically, I'm very independent. I don't vote for the party. I vote for the person. Um, as far as other things, I'm very independent on just a lot of issues in general, but I have more of a progressive slant, if you will. So for example, um, I believe everybody should have a right, and, and I stated this before, everybody should have their own right to be able to do something as long as they have that choice. I think the idea of choice is very important. If you don't give someone the choice and give them a have to, um, they're not going to be responsive to you, number one. And it's a kind of condition that I don't think anybody should go through or have it be placed on, relationships included. Okay, number 26, choir. Yes, I am a choir girl. I do sing in my church choir. Because of my schedule and how things go, sometimes I'm not able to sing in the choir as much as I would like. But having said that, I do enjoy it when I do. It's a For my father especially, it's a great stress reliever. And for me, it's just a something, you know. Um... But I, but I learn. I get to learn how to sing differently and in a different way. Have a fantastic and wonderful choir director who is just super cool, super creative, super inspiring. And actually some of his teaching techniques I've been able to use for my online teaching. So go figure. Uh, 27 noodles. Yes, I am a huge noodle fanatic. I don't care if it's Asian noodles, rice noodles, bean, well, rice noodles, eh, but bean noodles, pasta. I just love it. That's how I am. Especially macaroni and cheese when I have the chance. <laughs> uh, number 28. I'm not a prude. I'm not afraid to talk about sex. If somebody asks me a question about it, I'll talk about it. Just like relationship advice. Um, I've been through relationship enough to know what works, what doesn't work. Enough said. 29. Traveling. 
If I didn't go to Korea and live there for a while, I wouldn't enjoy, then I wouldn't enjoy traveling. Um, I have traveled to several countries. Canada, the Caribbean islands. Mo there's a few that I'd love to travel to that I haven't been to yet. Uh, Japan, Taiwan, obviously Korea. And there's a few more places I'd love to go to. I'd love to travel to the Netherlands. I would probably say now England, since I have a few more English connections. Uh, I'd probably have to say, uh, the, well, I don't know about the Ukraine. Um, I'd say Germany for sure. Cause that's most of my ancestry is German. Um, Singapore. And I'd say probably India at this point. Uh, 30 used books. I have a thing for used books. Every time I go into a used bookstore, I have to at least buy one or two. I have a collection of books that I have bought that I have not read yet that are new and used. But as far as the used books are concerned, there is just an energy and something about them. And I'm not really much into those e-reader books or the e-books unless I really, really have to. Or, hey, if that's a cheap thing or I can get it for free, I'll do that. Otherwise, used books are the way to go for me. I don't know what it is about them. I think it's a price to value thing. I also think, um, you know, it, it, it just holds something. It's like, hey, somebody once had it. Now they're willing to pass it on to you, and I think that's awesome. And then there's some, there are some books that I keep, and then some of them, hey, I figure it's my time to let go. Let somebody else have that book. Or sometimes it's that same book, sometimes it's a different one. Thrift stores number thirty-one. Yes, I am one of those people that likes thrift stores and antique stores. I'll add an addendum to that. Um, I think they're interesting, and actually, that's where you can buy the best put. And those are the best places for used books besides uh, libraries. Um, also, if I'm looking just for maybe some kind of clothing, I'm able to get it. Maybe the clothing doesn't last long, but at least I get it. I also make donations to, to thrift stores as well, because I, I feel like, hey, what a better way to do it. You Throwing it out is one thing, but hey, if you can donate to somebody who could probably use it, why not? All right, 32, first novel. My mentor who recently passed away, who was involved with the Business and Professional Women's uh, Organization, has always said that she has wanted to see me write my first book and get it, or my first novel, and have it published. I am going to work on that. Um, there, there's, there are things coming up right now. I know there's the, the Nan Remo that happens every year. I'm planning to get involved with that again because of the things I know now and things I've learned. Uh, I'm going to try writing a new story, and so let's see what happens. Okay, number 33, purple. Purple is one of my favorite colors. Um, I also like, and I'll add an extra here, I also like the pink, but I don't like the girly pink. I like more of the neon pink. And combine those with black, yeah, I, I don't like, but I'm not like the girly girl that like I said. I, as far as purple is concerned, I like sort of the dark purple, um, a little bit more than the lighter stuff. It's just funny. It's, it's always been that way. I think that was because of my grandma. My grandma loved that color. 34, goth. Yes. Uh, I still consider myself goth in a lot of ways, but I've grown out of it. Um, I would say probably uh, from, I would say maybe 2005 to about 2009, I was heavily into the genre, uh, especially for the aesthetic and for the artistry. I think what's great about goth as far as the culture is concerned, or or the subculture, whatever you want to consider it as, is that it 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 opens the door and allows you to explore your dark side. Everybody has a dark side, but they seem to be in denial of it. And I feel like, um, you know what? Embrace it. I think the gothic genre, or even the vamp the vampire lifestyle, because I've known people who live that. Um, and still keep connected to them. Same thing. It's 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 it allows you to embrace it because if that's who you, because that is who you are. Some people live that dark side out. Some people don't. But as long as you connect to it, you become a whole person. And I think that's what that has allowed me to do. And I appreciate that there are some people that still consider themselves as part of the gothic culture. Maybe not like they used to be, but they st it, it's still a part of them. And that's how I feel about it. 35, charity. Yes, I am a big proponent of charity. I have been involved in charity. I donate. There's certain causes that I actually donate to. Um, 
one of those causes actually is um oh what is it um i would have to say uh wow there's a few animal activist things um i think like when my church has like things for donating um youth donating um school supplies i do that christmas time uh definitely gifts for the homeless i'm a big thing on that all right 36 uh favorite author maya angelo she shares my birth her birth when she was alive she shared my birthday um and she's also my favorite poet she was strong she was such a strong woman but just just so admirable uh open mic nights number 37 yes i miss the open mic nights you have no idea how much I miss it. I wish I could seriously go back to it. I have enjoyed it so much in my life, and I think it's I think it's a lost art. And luckily, there are places that have it, but I just wish I had more time. And if I'm able to, I'm going to try to do it. I want to really get back into it again, quite frankly. All right, number 38, fall season. That is, This is my favorite time of year. Leaves are changing. It's gorgeous. It's a chance to, you know, get, you know, go to the apple orchard, picking the pumpkins, Halloween, Thanksgiving. That's just the fun stuff. 39, mentors. I, I believe in having mentors. It doesn't matter what profession or what you do. You always need a mentor to help you, to get you through, to just help you survive and keep your head on straight. And I've also been a mentor to a few people. Now, maybe... My mentorship is not a tradition in the traditional sense, but I'm also not afraid to say, hey, get reality check time. And I've done it for some of my students, and I'm happy to say, I'm proud to say, it's it's been a benefit. All right, number 41. My favorite character on Family Guy is Brian. Why? He's a dog. I like dogs. And also, he's the smartest one in that family. I tried actually on the search to find a Brian plushie. The ones they had were just not that good looking, and it's even tough to find it on the internet, too. Go figure. All right, number 42, cute animals. I love watching cute animal vids. My boyfriend is a huge fan of that. In fact, it's hysterical. When we both see something really cute, we both go into cute chasms. Now, how many boyfriends do that? I think that's pretty awesome. Number 43 and number 44 go together. If I were to ever have two different pets, I currently have a dog now, but if I ever had to get, like, like the not normal pets, um, a parrot for sure because I think they're interesting. They may be a bitch to take care of, but I would love to get a parrot, especially the especially a mine or, like, a minor bird, for example, which is kind of a technical parrot, but it's not. I would love to have a minor bird. Minor birds are just freaking awesome. Uh, num and uh, the guinea pig, that was actually my first animal when I was when I was a kid, was a guinea pig. But I wouldn't mind not having one of those again. They are just so cute. I just think they're awesome animals. Number 45 and 46 are two of my favorite actors of all time, favorite actors right now. Hugh Jackman, partially because he's multi-talented, but also he loves Korean food and he's into Korean culture. And then Michael Douglas. I don't know how to explain the thing with Michael Douglas. I just think there's just something about him that's... I don't know. There's just something... It's one of those things, you know how you like a certain something or someone, but you can't put your finger on it or why? He kind of fits that description in that mode. Okay, number 47, The Talk. One of my favorite talk shows ever. Um, I like it because they don't take themselves seriously. There's a lot of great people. Um... I think since they did have, they started out early and it was kind of confrontational, but ever since they made the changes, they've stayed with the same people. I absolutely love Sharon Osbourne. I absolutely love Sarah Gilbert, and I think it's it's a it's a great great show worth watching. Forty eight autism and Aspergers. I put this there because my boyfriend has a semblance of both of them. He is a functional person. But he does go into these modes where you, I could tell that it kicks in. And sometimes it's hard to relate and communicate with him. And through him staying with us temporarily until he gets his own place, my parents have actually learned a lot and learned what exactly is as well. Okay, 49 teeth work. Yes, over the last few months I have gotten some. I've had, uh, I go to a fantastic dentist that's about five minutes away. They care more about helping you out rather than the money, you know, the money. 
and they do so by working with you, listening to you, and say, okay, what are we going to do? And if you say, hey, I got a concern, you know, it, they, 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 they basically become like your health advocate. They become your friend, um, almost like a dental coach. I mean, and everybody's just, the service is there. They're very respectful of you. There's a very positive energy. You don't need to feel afraid. Um, yes, yeah, some of the procedures can be a bitch, but then after a few days later, um, the pain does eventually go away, and I've, I'm willing to spend my money there, and I just think they're just, it's, it's just a great place to go. Finally, number 50, networking. This is one of the reasons why I got into YouTube. This is one of the reasons why I do what I do. I like networking. I think there is a power in your networks. You can find a job. You can maybe find a relationship. Um, I think you could do a lot of amazing things, and I think without those networks, um, I think we'd cease to exist. We just need the strength of them and learn to communicate a little bit better. So having said that, I know this was a long video, but I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I'm looking forward to those of you who are tagged. So take care.